baby number two on the way. Oh. Congratulations. Ashley, can uh -huh. you show us your baby bump? Oh, yeah, I think I can. Uh, it's hard for me to get it here, hey? I mean, I, you guys can see it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's there. All right. I found out really early. They actually do these home blood tests now. So even though we were in COVID and everything, I ordered this test online. When I was eight weeks pregnant, it came. I did my little prick of the finger, sent it in the mail, and I had the results the following day. Incredible. Oh my God. So do we have names yet? Yes, I do have a name. I won't tell you the name, name, but it will begin with a D. I'll keep that one as a surprise for you. Your Dean's going to be a big brother to a little brother. I see why people have like eight kids. They're the best. Granted, he is starting to do tantrums now, and he's starting to shake his head for no, and uh, he's very strong in his convictions already. Wow. Yeah. Oh, You're going to have your hands full, Ashley. I uh, am indeed. I'm already looking for a nanny, so. <laughs> Being pregnant and having a toddler is no joke. In addition to the fatigue of this little human zapping all of the life out of me and taking all of the nutrients that I consume, I'm running after Dean. Was Michael excited when he found out it was a boy? Oh my gosh, Michael was elated. Oh my gosh, he was absolutely elated when he found out we were having a boy. And he would have been happy with boy or a girl, but when I say that Michael is obsessed with Dean, I am not exaggerating. Whenever Michael comes into the door, Dean does not see me anymore. I completely disappear. So, and that's nice. I mean, daddy is fun. He does flips, he rides the hoverboard down the hall with him. You know, like, I can't keep, I can't keep up. Right. I'm this pregnant woman just trying to get by. So the fact that we can have another little Dean is really exciting. So Robin, I want to talk a little bit about you and Juan. You talk a little bit about how you guys met in high school. We met in 1996. I was a senior in high school and Juan was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And we instantly just kind of started spending time with one another. So Juan went to a private boys school, Catholic boys school, I went to a private school, and um, our schools played each other, and I'm sitting in the hallway, and I'm reading a book, and so I'll be honest, I knew that his team was coming to play, my team. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my first time I'm admitting to this. So I had already like known of him and seen him like at other games and stuff, but we never like interacted. But I noticed that his school was coming to play my school, and I happened to not have basketball practice that day because I played on the basketball team. And so I was sitting in the hallway uh, where like the team has to pass through. And I was just sitting in the hallway reading a book. And <laughs> that's funny. And all of a sudden, uh, I was reading a book on a bench. And all of a sudden, here comes this skinny kid from the other team dribbling the ball in the hallway. And I look up and I just, it's him. And I look back at my book, act like I don't see him. And then he comes, what comes closer and he says, um, don't I know you from somewhere? And, and the rest is history. Aww. So, so we started talking, we were talking on the phone. He used to watch Young and the Restless all the time. So we were talking about Young and the Restless, like so, like such cheesy stuff. But you know, I, like, I learned that he had lost both of his parents not, not too long before. And um, when my parents found out about that, like they instantly just like wrapped their arms around him and like became, you know, a second family for him. Um, and, and we've been attached ever since. Well, unfortunately, Karen misses the proposal. So did you, did you call your best friend and tell her to come? She doesn't want to be here. Mm because everybody in this group Be well, is going to the last to the time fire. we saw her, you know? She ran out of her own event. What happened? We heard something about a flight delay yes. in Florida. Is Karen coming? Did you see the group chat? Like recent? Like, yes, like, like it says she had mechanical problems with the plane coming back from HSN, therefore she won't be able to make it, potentially. That damn plane was in a hangar. We were supposed to take off and they're like, we're sorry, your, f your flight is delayed. So I went up to the uh, airline stewardess and I said, so what's going on with the plane? She said, well, it's in a hangar. There's a mechanical problem, but we're gonna fix it and we will be leaving in about an hour. Well, two hours go by. So I go back up. She said, well, we've had to call in a specialist, you know, for the hangar and yeah. 
This went on and on for like a three to four hour delay. And I knew I had Robin's event to get to. So I knew these girls would say I would not try to make that damn event. At that point, I was like, hold on. Four, like three to four delays, and you want me to get on the plane you, because magically now it's off the hangar and you want me to fly. I said, I need another ticket. I will be late at, to Robin's event, but I will be there. And I showed up and I wanted to be there. And I was going to be there come hell or high water. And I didn't want my, my delay, which, you know, to distract from her celebration. I had put two and two together. And I'm like, this is the big night. This is going to happen. No story about me could start and distract, you know, take away from her celebration. But we'll see how that goes. No, no. She I wasn't going to come. She didn't feel like it. It was all this drama with her. And it was like, girl, if you don't want to come, don't come. I hate that I always have to like second guess what Karen says. Like, I really hate that. Yeah. But unfortunately, I did not. I didn't think she was going to make it. I was super shocked when she walked through the door. You know, <clears throat> there was a time where I would have believed that she had mechanical issues. But there's just something about rose-colored glasses coming off when people show you versions of themselves that mm. just forces you to see a manipulative side or a, a, a dishonest side of someone. And, you know, Karen is very good for giving you a, a good old story, child, about the things. And I honestly could believe that because of the absence of certain people, Karen wanted to not be there or make a statement by showing up very late. I want anyone who I have in my orbit for me to be able to vouch for their character. And for me to be able to say, no, they didn't mean that. Or yes, this is what they meant. And quite frankly, since she wears so many different faces, depending mm. on who she's around, I can't even answer that question with a clear mind. Because I don't know. I don't know who she is. I don't know her. Mm. Mariah. But the line of questioning to me is so stupid because nowhere in my DNA do I need to ask any of these women permission to live my life the way I do, to plan my events the way I do, to be the kind of friend I want to be to them. So they just need to buckle up and, and, and enjoy the ride because that's how I roll. And, you know, I, it makes them look really in, immature. It really does. And that's not a reflection on me. That's you all. How dare you question the safety of a plane that, when it's right here, okay? First and foremost, I would like for Karen to learn that she's not a good liar and to just give it up altogether. The truth will set her free and no, no matter what people think about her decision to come late, that's Karen's business and she just needs to own it and just be like, yeah, I came late, so what, okay? Just, ugh, we all see through it, you know? Ulcer, plane trouble, come on. We'll still love you. And my publicist was with me. Was she lying too? I'm just saying, y'all be reaching. These girls, they reach beyond the moon. I, I mean, they are creative. And I have grown to enjoy it because I'm sitting and unready all the time for them. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, try it again. Try it again. No. I came in very late that evening, threw on an outfit. I don't even know how I look in that scene. But y'all show me later. Uh, Cause I, I don't think I had time for hair or makeup. You know, I don't show up like that. <laughs> I was like, so I will not be surprised. I better look good. Y'all better put some filters on it. I know that much. <laughs> Monique, for you, what did Karen say? Did she straight up invite you to this party? She Thanks said that she weren't invited. She said I wasn't invited? What? Are you inviting Monique? No. Thank you. Else. She's been asking me to come. I knew about the wig shift party before production even knew. <laughs> like, so that's how far back this goes. So when it came time and it was approaching, you know, of course she's like, I want you to be there. And I said, Karen, I want to be there too. I said, but I don't really feel comfortable being around all of the women. I said, so maybe I'll just come early. This way, when the other ladies get there, I'll already be gone. I said, but either way, I'm supporting you regardless. So there was never a discussion of, well, you can't come or you're not invited or 
you know, I don't want you here because the ladies don't want you here. There was never, uh, never a discussion like that at all. And I was never not invited. I actually was the person that said, I would rather come early. Maybe I'll come help you set up. And then down the line, I actually had an event that evening. So I told her, well, I'm not going to come like dressed in sweats. I'm going to come, you know, look nice. I'll hang out with you, see what you got going on, support you. And then I'm ahead to the event that I have to go to. We never had a discussion where I was not invited. So that was really just like, wait, what? Did you feel like Karen was trying to rush you out before the other ladies came? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Candace, we'll get here in a few minutes. And then I'm gonna get out of here and let you go. And you can leave this, Monique. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Say yeah. a prayer for me. And I don't, I'm not, like, I felt kind of like, like, dang, you know. Oh, I know she did. We talked about it. She, we had to, look, real friends have got to talk about it. But I have a genuine relationship with Monique and that, that could not have gone unspoken because we both were, were like, damn. It's, this this is real. It's affecting our friendship. But at the same time, I understood, and I I know that she didn't want her night to turn into this whole heated mess and what could come down if I was still there when other ladies started coming. So I understood why she was. But I'm like, I came early, so I wouldn't have to rush. She's like, you know, I felt a certain way. I said, and I, I and I said it was hard for me too. But I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. But I would do it again. There was no other way to do it. No other way. I would I would not exclude her. And I would not be dictated to. Because these women were saying, all the girls were saying, if Monique came, they wouldn't be there. And so I'm not supposed to invite Monique because you said I shouldn't invite Monique. No, that, it doesn't work that way for me. I'm going to find a way to accommodate both my friends while they're going through this difficult time. There was not going to be any point in which... I would overlap with the ladies. So yeah, she definitely rushed me on out the door. <laughs> you share a story about you and Michael exploring your open relationship. I saw a pretty little lady and we just started dancing with each other and she puts her hands down in my pants. Inside yeah. of your pants? And Michael's right there? Yes, Watch Michael's watch. watching. Oh yeah, strangely, <laughs> Michael, um, venturing out the way he did has allowed me to finally be expressive about how we have done this together. And it's a big relief. I already knew that Ashley and Michael's sex life and their relationship was, you know, not traditional. I just didn't think that she was going to share it with the group. Um, I thought that, you know, she would kind of keep that to herself. I always knew they were a fun, loving couple. I never knew the extent of their openness so when ashley revealed that i was like oh you know i i had never heard anything like that um from ashley and michael either but when they said it it just sort of you know clicked in for me as well like oh okay i, I see where they're coming from yeah i felt like it was more of the same like she yeah that story was not shocking like you know that's Part for the course of the Darbies. But she had kind of alluded to it a while ago. I don't can't remember what season it was, but she actually had said she had been with women. I've made jokes and I've referenced it in the past to the women, but I don't think either they didn't take me seriously or they were just like, oh, that Ashley. But then, you know, now that this has happened with Michael, they want more details. I guess the story is more salacious now and they really want to know the details, which I'm happy to share. You know, when the mood strikes, if I'm attracted to someone, she's attracted to me and then Michael comes over and there's a mutual attraction, like it is what it is. But it explained a lot to me in terms of Ashley's reactions in past. That one thing about them having a threesome in the past has nothing to do with what Michael was doing the week before. Like I just, yeah. especially because she made it seem like they, they had threesomes in the past, but they didn't, it didn't even seem recent. Like it wasn't yeah. like, oh yeah, like we had threesomes up until the time I got pregnant. And now like, I don't, I, I think that was like something years ago, but yeah, let's just, you know, say where our relationship's a little bit different and that's what it is. I don't know. They like to have fun. They like, Michael is, he may be, up there in age, but Michael is really 35. Like, I'm gonna just put it out there. Michael is 35 years old, living his best life, and Ashley is right there with him. Do you think any of the other ladies have had a threesome? No. <laughs> I don't feel like any of these ladies have ever partaken in a threesome. But do I think they would? 
The one who I think I could see maybe a little bit is Robin. Yeah, Robin, when she drinks, she's like a little bit more let loose, carefree. So I think she'd be a little more inclined. You ask Robin about, hey, when is Juan going to propose? And you bring up that you saw, you know, Giselle's IG story yeah. and she was kind of twirling. When I saw Giselle's ass on Instagram, I'm talking about she in front of a jewelry store, I'm like, Juan is joining her at the jewelry store. It's happening. It's on and popping. Yes. What do we got to do with Juan? I thought that Juan had already asked the question because they've been so open about wanting to, you know, get married again. And for it to be, for Giselle to put it out there publicly on, you know, Instagram, I was like, oh my God, this may be it. I did not expect how Karen acted that day. Karen needs to just mind her business. The end. <laughs> so I really wanted to know where they were headed next. So I asked my friend Robin where we headed next. And well, we see how Giselle responds to that. How, how dare I ask? But Karen, on the other hand, you can't ask her about Ray. You can't ask her about herself. You know, it's, it's very double standard when it comes to Karen Huger. Well, how dare you not, you know, let us give us a heads up as a, a girl group because we're all intelligent and I'm friends with Robin, you know, not the best of friends. You are the best of friends with her, but I'm friends with Robin and I want to see Robin and Juan get married. So of course I'm going to ask and be a little nosy, but why wouldn't I, if you didn't give me a heads up, Giselle? So don't act all dramatic now because I asked the obvious. I can't respect Karen for how she handled this at all. <laughs> I mean, you know how this goes. We all have to be in each other's business. So, <laughs> <laughs> Giselle, you got to roll with it. Come on. <laughs> Giselle takes you aside, too, when you guys head to the marketplace, and she's like, stop asking. Let's say Juan is going to do that. I'm not saying that, but let's just say he is. We don't want to spoil it for Robin. Thank you for dropping that bit of tea. Because I now know the ring is coming. Right, no, God, I didn't good. say that. I did not say that, Karen. And you know, hey, now I know how to conduct. Now I know what to do. Because if, if it is a surprise, of course I want Robin. She deserves a full on surprise moment. How, you know, but give me a heads up because I'm going to ask the question. Y'all know I don't have a problem asking the question. After dinner, you go back to the hotel room and you are trying to get in touch with Michael. You call him multiple times, he doesn't answer. I just wanna go home. Because I can't. To say that I was heart, well it's like, what is the word? It's like, Ooh, I feel like we need to have a dictionary for moms because some of the words that exist don't fully encapsulate the feelings that you have. To say I felt anguish and I was feeling like nervous and it was like, like my heart was literally in my stomach when I couldn't get in touch with Michael and know how Dean was doing. In the front of my mind, I know Dean is safe. I know he's with people who love him, who care about him, all of that. That's that's the logical side. But then there's this other like illogical, anything could have gone wrong, there could have been an earthquake, the building could have shattered, there could have been a fire. All of these scenarios play out in my mind. Right, so your concern was coming from a place of like, is Dean okay and less about what is Michael doing right oh, now? Oh honey, I... You know, I care about Michael. I love him, that's my husband. Mm -hmm. But honestly, Dean was my primary focus right then and there because I'm used to spending every single day, all day with my child. And so to have him be away from me, so far away from me where I can't be there in an instant if something happens, I just felt naked. If Michael had elected to use that opportunity to do something that he wasn't supposed to do, well then, you know. I just have to flush my ring down the toilet in Portugal. Was it going to end up in the Mediterranean or something? That's, that's exactly where it would belong.